Hey, how you doing? I just got on because I want to share something with you. Because uh, while me and my husband was on our way to church this morning, I heard a man of God say, uh, where sin abound, grace abounds more. You know, that's what the word of God say. And I was thinking about that thing while I was up in church. You know, while I was up in church, God gave me a word going to get the word. You understand what I'm saying? God gave me a word going to get the word. And uh, lately we've been watching the news and uh, all over TikTok. You hear this um, about Shanquilla Robinson. And God just all of a sudden sent me over to Genesis. Now, I told you earlier, he said, where sin abounds, where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Mm -hmm. So in the book of Genesis, and while I'm sitting up in church before the service even really gets started, all of a sudden I grabbed my pen and God just gave me the stuff with the right. You know, when he wrote down the ten, when, when he gave Moses the Ten Commandments, he pretty much wrote them down for Moses. He, he wrote them down and gave them to Moses. But as I put the pen in my hand, God began to allow me to write this down. And I was going to Genesis and... uh. I, it's Genesis the fourth chapter. It's Genesis the fourth chapter. And in Genesis the fourth chapter, you'll find these words. Now, this is after Adam and Eve have sinned in the garden, okay? After they contemplated sin, after they thought about sin, after uh, Eve has eaten from the tree of uh, uh, the knowledge of good and evil. And now, you know, sin is present, okay? And so um, that's pretty much how our life goes sometimes. You know, we'll start doing things and we don't think something's going to happen. Then all of a sudden, the enemy tests our mind. And if you fall to that temptation, you're going to uh, encounter or you're going to do whatever the enemy tell you to do. But if you don't, you're going to pass. And this is what God told Cain. You know, um, when Cain got mad at God about Abel's gift, you know what I'm saying? When God accepted Abel's gift and he wouldn't accept Cain's gift. And it got me to thinking about this uh, Shanquille Robinson thing about what happened to the people. And I want to share with you what happens to you when you are let say, when you allow sin to abound and you won't allow grace to abound. When you allow grace to abound, you will let stuff slide. But when you don't allow grace to abound, you will sin. God told Cain, he gave Cain some vital information, but Cain didn't pass the test. And these people, when they went on this trip with this young lady, they didn't pass the test either. And it's going to cost them something, just like it's going to cost me and you when we sin. You understand what I'm saying? And this is what the Word of God said. It says, And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she bare, and she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Mm -hmm. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And that's what happened to a lot of people. Their countenance fell when people won't receive them like they receive somebody else. Or it's something else going good. Or it's something going good on in somebody else's life and there's nothing going good on. It's nothing good going on in their life. You understand what I'm saying? They get mad and all of a sudden they become vindictive and spiteful and malicious towards that person. You understand? Not knowing that they're not really fighting against that flesh and blood in that person. They're fighting against the spirit. And that's that spirit is not always in that person. It's within yourself. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why are you mad? Why are you so upset about this thing? Why, why, why are you letting this get to you that they prospering and you're not? Why are you letting this bothering you that people like them and they don't like you? You understand what I'm saying? And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Why are you so Why are you looking like that? Why are you acting like that? Why are you doing that? Why are you plotting that? What, what you got going? Look, look, hold on. I got something for you too. But this is just the test. You got to pass the test. Then the Lord say, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? Cain, if you do good, don't you know I'll accept you? I'll accept you if you do good too. If you do well, if you do stuff out the purity of your heart, I'll accept you too. He said, if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. What did Cain choose? Let's see. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Mm -hmm. He's God talking about sin. Now, if you let grace abound more, you're going to rule over sin. But if you let sin abound more, sin going to rule over you. And then you're going to be made a mockery of. And the word goes on to continue to say this. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. They planned a trip to go to Cabo. And they talked and they had a good time. You understand? Yeah, I'm talking about Shanquille Robinson's story, her and her friends. But hold on now. We got a part to play in this too. Hold on. 
And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And time passed that they rose up against Miss Robinson and they slew her. Okay, let's go on and see what the word get to say. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? But the Robinson, the Robinson girl, her parents, they begin to ask about her. They, they begin to wonder what happened to her. You understand what I'm saying? They called and they tried to let them know uh, that this happened to her. And God was saying no from the grave. The grave was speaking. No, that ain't what happened. You know what I'm saying? And in the beginning, you'll accept what people say until the evidence come out that that's not what happened. So God is there. He's watching Cain and Abel. He's watching this whole incident go on. And that's a lot of time. We think that because don't nobody else see us, that God don't see us. God sees us the whole time. He pondered all our footsteps. And God said, and the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I supposed to be watching him? Do I supposed to be keeping up with what he's supposed to be doing? Oh, maybe he's out doing this. Maybe they are out doing this. Oh, the last time I saw them with this time. Oh, this is what happened to them. You understand what I'm saying? That's us. That's what people do. You know what I'm saying? And he said, what hast thou done? What you do, Cain? What, what you done did to Abel? What is Abel, Cain? What you done done to Abel? And Cain to the God, am I my brother's keeper? I'm supposed to be, what? I'm supposed to be watching him? Ain't you, ain't you his keeper? Ain't you supposed to be watching him? What you mean? What you mean? I'm supposed to be watching him too? Well, I mean, I ain't supposed to be paying no attention to what he supposed to be doing. That's what you do when you lying, when you deceptive. You come up with excuses to cover up what you've done. But God be done saw you the whole time. And God be done put you in a whole lot of hearts to convict your heart to see what's going on with what you've done. You see what I'm saying? And so he goes on to say, he says, The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And the voice of that young lady's blood cried to people from the ground. And so people, guess what they do? They begin to hearken. When they saw the video, when God allowed the video to be revealed. So he, he had to touch that young lady's heart for her to post that video. When he allowed the video and all this stuff to be revealed. You see what I'm saying? It was conviction going on in the spirit. In the spirit realm, uh-huh. And God was like, it ain't what they say it is. Something else happened. Uh-huh. And so that's what's happening. That's what's going on now. And so God says, and now art thou cursed from the earth. Your brother blood. The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. The voice of your sister's blood, the voice of your friend's blood, the voice of your husband's blood, the voice of your wife's blood, the voice of your family's blood is crying to me from the ground. Mm -hmm. I know what you did and you cursed. See, because y'all going through a whole lot right now and you don't understand why you're going through what you're going through. You are cursed for the sin that you committed. See, because you could have accepted grace. You could allow whatever happened between y'all to slide, but you didn't do that. You allowed sin to abound, and sin conquered your flesh, and now it's ruling over you instead of grace. Mm -hmm. But you know, God can help you. He really can. So the word goes on and says, And now thou art cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. It's like everything you try to do now, it ain't going to prosper. And if it do prosper, you ain't going to feel good about it. It's going to be always something on the inside of you. Why did I do that? How could I allow that to happen? What was going on with me? The reason why I didn't intervene. I mean, when it, when it some, why, why, why didn't nobody stop me? Why, why, why I didn't get a phone call? Why, why didn't nobody say nothing to me? Why when I did get the phone call, I didn't hearken to it? Why when somebody told me let's not do that, I decided I want to do it anyway? You see what I'm saying? So God says, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. So now all these people on social media, they crucifying you abroad. That ain't good either. Mm -mm, that ain't so good. now all these people on social media, they condemning you. Their spirit has connected with that spirit, the voice of that young lady's blood crying from the ground. And now you're in a state of what have I done? Why did I do that? Why did I allow, why did I allow things to get so bad for that to happen? You see what I'm saying? And you thought maybe when you ended her life or when you took her life, that was going to stop everything. No. When you ended her life and you took her life, you pretty much opened up everything. What you were supposed to do is you're supposed to let grace abound. You're supposed to let love abound. Love covers a multitude of sin. You start realizing, you know what? It ain't even worth me taking nobody's life. 
You know what? Maybe I need to go deal with something that's going on the inside of me. Well, how could I feel that bad about a person that I want to take their life? But God said, now everything you do, it ain't really going to prosper. You're going to have to do it extra hard. You're going to have to work extra hard. You're going to have to do extra, extra, extra. You know why? To be accepted. You know why? Because of what you've done. You sin in the garden. You sin amongst the person that you said was your friend. You said this was your friend. You said that this was your friend. And you sin amongst them. And when you sin amongst them, you sin amongst God. And so God goes on to say, he said, And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. So now your punishment is greater than you can bear. Your punishment is greater than the satisfaction you thought you was going to get from her death. Your punishment is greater than the satisfaction that you thought that you were going to get from that young lady's death. Not knowing that when you crucified her, you pretty much crucified God. And you open up the door for him to be resurrected. So now she's being resurrected. God through her is being resurrected. And now you're having to deal with all these people coming up against you. Why? Because you are cursed right now for what you've done. For how you indulged in that. For how you participated in that act. The word of God said, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. And Cain saying, now it's too much for me to bear. Why wasn't it too much for you to bear when you decided to take that life? Huh? Why didn't you think of these things before you decide to take that life? Huh? Cain says, it's too much for me. Pretty much like everybody coming up against me. Don't nobody know what I was going through. Did you express what you was going through? Did you pray about what you was going through? Did you seek God for what you was going through? You didn't, did you? No, you didn't. You thought, maybe I'm going to get rid of this problem and I ain't going to never have to worry about it no more. Not realizing that you was creating a bigger problem. You open up the door to a bigger problem now. It's bigger than what it was. And there are consequences behind that. And so he said, it's more than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And everybody that's finding out what y'all done, everybody that's seeing that video, they slaying y'all. They condemning y'all. They convicting y'all. But there's still hope for you. It's still for hope. Even when the world throw you away, it's still hope for you in God. You understand what I'm saying? All you got to do is confess. All you got to do is do a first John. Confess. He said, if you confess with your heart. He said, if you confess your sins, he faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Because even though we weren't there, God was. And God uses his other vessels to reach out to you so that he can save you. So that he can save whatever it is on the inside of you, causing you to do those things or to think those thoughts that you think that are not God-like. And Cain saying, my punishment is greater than what I've done. And he said, everywhere I go, people going to slay me. He said, because I'm a fugitive and I'm a, vagab and I'm a vagabond. It's like I'm running around. It's like I'm homeless. Everybody look at me. They, I'm in, I'm di they in dismay. Oh, look what happened. Oh. Did you see them? They were never like that before. I've never seen them like that. How they come from that to that? How you think they come from that to that? They came from that to that because of sin. Sin does that to us. But this is what God says. Because that's why I told you it's still yet hope for you. You understand what I'm saying? God says this. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Now, that's a message for me. And for everybody else condemning you for what you've done to that young lady in Cabo. God told us not to do nothing to you. He told us not to slay you. He said, because if we do that, sevenfold going to come up on us. Right now, we need to be reaching out to you and hope that your soul may be saved. You understand what I'm saying? And hope that you may gain eternal life and hope that you may seek God to be your Lord and Savior. But first, you got to repent. So now you got to be honest about that thing. You got to tell the truth about what happened. I mean, from the beginning to the end, because, baby, if you don't, God going to tell your story and it ain't going to be nothing like you telling the baby. He going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and he going to set it all free. And if you think the world against you now, <laughs> wait how the world going to act when God tell the story, when everything really come out. And you say, oh, they forgot something. Well, he giving you the opportunity to tell it now. You got the opportunity to be honest about it now. You got the opportunity to repent. Now, you know what it means to repent? It means to change your mind. It means to change your ways. It means to change the way you think, change the way you do things. Okay? It means to look at him and say, I ain't doing that no more. I ain't going to act like that no more. I, I, I ain't going to commit them more kind of crimes. I don't know what came over me. The sin came over you, baby. Just like it came over Cain. 
Cain couldn't accept the fact that God accepted Cain. Cain couldn't accept the fact that God accepted Abel's offering more than he accepted his. Cain was being tested. You were being tested in Cabo, Mexico. But you didn't pass the test. See, you would have passed the test if y'all would have came back alive. Y'all might have had a little disagreement, but y'all would have came back alive. And y'all would have been able to work it out. But you didn't pass the test because somebody else didn't come back alive. And a whole lot of other people didn't come to that person's defense. Cain didn't come to his brother's defense. He allowed the enemy to overtake his mind. And what the enemy said, do it. Do it. Do it real good. Mm -hmm. Beat him down. Do this and do that, do that. And it still wasn't enough. It wasn't enough until you took the life. And then after you took the life, you felt guilty. You felt powerful but powerless. You know why? Because you allow sin to overtake you. But just think if you would allow grace to abound more than sin. Because the word of God said where sin abounds, grace abounds more. Just think if you would have had the word of God to help you fight off that enemy that came up over you. Because you know, you know God allowed an evil spirit to come over Saul. He allowed one to come over you. And it overtook you. You didn't overtook it. But like I said earlier, it's still hope for you. I'm still praying that you be saved. I'm still praying that you turn from your wicked ways. I'm still praying that you be honest about what happened. I'm still praying that you give your brothers and sisters around you peace. You know why? Because no man is an island of his own. We're all connected. And if one hurt, all of us hurt. It don't matter how you feel like you were justified in what you were doing. You were not. The only person justified to take a life is God. God will even whoop Satan when he messed with his kids. He'll use Satan and he'll whoop Satan. When he mess with his kids, he'll do that. So, um, just imagine. <laughs> just imagine if you would have allowed grace to abound more. The word of God says, I sit before you life and death choose life. That was the day when you're supposed to choose life, but you chose death. If you would have chose grace, oh my God. And if you would have not have chose sin, mm -hmm. sin doesn't have to be your obvious choice. These are my notes I'm reading that I wrote in church. Uh huh. Just think if you, just think if you as a friend would have chose grace more than sin, more than what you thought that person was doing to you. That person would still be, that person would still be alive today, and the world, a lot of the world, wouldn't be mourning. No matter what she done before that, no matter what you done before that, what matters is how you responded. And the way y'all responded, y'all allow sin to take over. You allow spiritual weakness to find a place. And now this young lady's life is gone. Why? Because we didn't allow grace to abound more than sin. And sin overtook us. So I'm yet praying for you, baby. All six of y'all. I'm yet praying for you. That you do the right thing. Because the right thing needs to be done. In order for you to find peace. In order for you to gain grace. Yes. Amen.